Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hope you had a great weekend of worship and rest uh, as we kick off Monday. We are wrapping up the life of David. 2 Samuel 24 is our text. Hey, I just got to tell you, the Bible has lots of interesting and weird stories. And David's account in Samuel ends with one of those, and it's about the census. So what happened was David, toward the end of his life, decided he wanted to count his soldiers. And, uh, and see, this wasn't God-directed. There are times when God directs the people to count their soldiers and number them and all this. This was not one of those times. David knew it wasn't right, and he did it anyway. Uh, and, and basically, he's saying, I want to take pride in how many men I have to fight for me. And so he kind of like, okay, go and do it and, and send them out. It took like eight months. But he's demonstrating a lack of trust in God. Because God had already said, it doesn't matter how many soldiers you have, I can win the victory. Proved that with Goliath, right? He proved that over and over and over again. But David is acting proudly and says, count my men. Well, in any case, David recognizes his sin and repents. And the prophet comes to him and says, hey, you, you got to choose your punishment. You know, uh, you can have, uh, you know, three years of famine. You can have three months of running from your adversaries. You can have three days of a plague. And David's like, I'll fall into the hands of God, not other people. So let's, uh, let's have the plague. 70,000 people die in three days. I mean, it's wiping people out. This is terrible. This is tragic. The death angel comes and hovers over Jerusalem and David sees him, and that's, and this is weird, I kind of know this whole story is weird, but that's when the redemption piece happens. So the death angel's in Jerusalem, David sees it, and God says, go make a sacrifice. So he goes out, and the death angel's hovering over on a mountain that's right out, uh, aside of Jerusalem, and it's owned by a guy named Arauna. And David comes out, and Arauna goes out to meet him, and he's like, what can I do for you? David's like, I need to make a sacrifice here. And Arauna says, well, then take all the stuff. It's yours. And David says, no, I will not make a sacrifice to God that costs me nothing. So he buys the field. He buys the space. He buys the oxen, all that stuff. He makes a sacrifice there. The death angel relents and goes away. Now, you go, that's really weird. Yes, it is. But here's the things that we need to take away from this. That place where David sacrificed on that mountain became the Temple Mount, and that became the Holy of Holies. That spot. That was the place where God wanted his temple to be built. While David didn't build the temple, you'll hear about that later about Solomon. So what are some things we can take away from this? Really crazy, weird story. First of all, don't make stupid decisions based on pride. We're all prone to do it. We all get our feelings hurt or we get a fence up and we make bad decisions. Don't do it. Take a breath, pray before you make a decision based on pride. Secondly, don't offer a worthless sacrifice to God. A sacrifice is just that. It's a sacrifice. What's it going to cost you matters to God because it reveals your heart. And then thirdly, don't be surprised by the ways that God redeems. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody knew this would be the Temple Mount. Nobody knew this would be the place where the Holy of Holies would exist. But God knew. And out of something tragic, out of rebellion and pride, God still directed his people and chose the spot for his temple. Uh, God's doing that in your life too. If you'll trust him, if you'll follow him, if you'll avoid the pride, and when you do sin, repent quickly and trust God with the results. I hope that blesses you and I hope you have a great day.